Are you a serious dinosaur collector who wants to make better buying decisions? If so, this is the show for you. Welcome to episode 3.1 of the Dinosaur Review Show. You might be saying, why 3.1? Well, we recently released the Mosasaur video, but after doing so, we received two new Mosasaur figures from Collect A. Welcome back, George. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Have you had a chance to take a look at these two new figures from Collect A? I have not, so I'm super excited to take a look at them. Actually, one is the brand new figure from Collect A. The other one is their older version, but they still have it in production, so we are gonna take a look at that today. This is the Collect A Mosasaur, the first one that they had in production. And right off the bat, I gotta say, I love how it feels. It's very smooth, uh, but being very smooth also means there are no scale patterns on it. And if we're gonna follow the pattern that we did in the other videos, we're gonna go straight to the head and the snout head sculpt looks really good if we look inside you see that second row of teeth is present so collect they did their homework let's move on next to the flippers you can actually see the skeleton part of the flippers which are five kind of like finger like extensions on them and the same thing goes for the back flipper if we go towards the tail there's that two part tail with the top part being shorter than the lower part so that is accurate according to the fossils that we've found so far when it comes to the bottom we see it has a cloaca that is a nice little touch i see a lot of more recent figures include but what i want to bring focus to is the coloration you see that lighter color in the bottom and the darker color in the top that is a really good sign that means that they know about camouflage in the ocean so uh, i kind of like this too especially with the uh spattering of polka dots it looks like sun coming down the waves kind of flickering off the back of the mosasaur so i gotta say it looks pretty good in the previous video you mentioned that mosasaur would have had scales though so this one with the smooth texture points off for that i would take points off for that um whenever they make smooth models like this it, it's reminiscent of like whales and dolphins which are mammals which they're not related to Mosasaurs at all, except for the body shape. And one feature that I noticed on this model that I hadn't seen on any of the other models were those cavities in the skull behind the eyes. Do you want to take a look at those for me? So those cavities back there are actually the areas of the Mosasaur skull that would include the ear and a jaw attachment. Now, I don't think they would have been as prominent in life. Um, their closest relatives, the water monitors that are alive today, they do have the same structure in their skulls, but it's filled in by muscle. So it's not really a concave thing. Uh, so I will have to take points off for that. Um, fortunately, shrink wrapping is a thing that we see in toys, but overall, it's, it's a decent figure. Explain for us again what shrink wrapping was. Oh, shrink wrapping is when the interpretation of any prehistoric creature has the skin really tightly up against the bones. It's really hard to reconstruct what an extinct animal looked like, but we do know that they were not skin tight to the bones. So that's one of the things that I try to look for in these figures. Would it be like an elephant skin? Um, see, that is, that is hard to answer because elephants are mammals and looking at the physique of these animals we want to go closer to reptiles since mosasaurs were marine reptiles as for dinosaurs their skin probably was a lot closer to the kind of skin you see in bird feet okay got it let's take a look at the other model from collect day this one is new to me you can already see it is a very big figure but first thing i want to say is i love the articulation of the jaw I love a figure that you can open and close the mouth because um, it's, it's perfect for different poses and also for play. You can see that it does have that secondary row of teeth in the back. Very good. And they're all painted in nicely. And the head shape is really nice. I do like that uh, that hole that we were talking about in the previous collect a figure has now been filled in with what we know. And that little orifice you see there is for the ear. If we look at the flippers, they again follow that kind of patterning of the uh, finger bones being visible under the flipper. And we can see that on the back flipper as well. And one thing I forgot to mention was the scales. Look at those. Those are beautiful. 
I like the texture of them too. Towards the back of the tail, we still have our shorter fin at the top and our longer fin at the bottom. And what neat little detail they added in is this notch. I call it battle damage. It's some sort of scarring. There's oh, one on right. the tail. There's one on a couple of the fins on the back and things like that. You're absolutely right. Look, I can see it now that you pointed it out. That is really neat because these animals were not going to be pristine models. These guys were hardened by life. And um, speaking of life, it has a cloaca, which is the portal of life for a lot of these creatures. <laughs> I like that portal of life. I love how they've kind of sculpted in where the uh, breast muscles are, as well as the pelvic muscles on the side. It really shows the musculature of these creatures. And look at those neck folds. It's not chubby, but it's very natural to how monitor lizards have their necks formatted. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, for those of you who may have not seen our previous video, monitor lizards are the closest relatives of Mosasaurs alive today. So that includes the Komodo dragon. Taking a look at the coloring, I actually like the coloring of this one a lot more than the previous Collect Day. It's a lot more subtle. It's kind of got a greenish gray to it at the top and a tan yellow uh, white bottom. So this is the counter shading that marine animals use for camouflage and a predator this big needs all the camouflage it can get. So I'd say I really like this one. One of the other items that you mentioned in the prior video was the proportionality of the flippers. Do you feel that these are accurately proportional? Oh, you are absolutely right. I did mention that in the previous video. The proportions seem adequate. The back flippers are slightly smaller, but they seem to be very close in size. I'm talking like just a fraction off. Uh, typically, the Mosasaur flippers are pretty proportionate um, in that aspect, so they should be close to each other in size. I do like how this one looks. Mm -hmm. Did the Collect A model have a bifurcated tongue? Would you look at that? It does have a bifurcated tongue. That is a neat little detail that I forgot to mention. How about the other Collect A figure? Did it did not. See, that tongue looks oddly human-like. I would have to say the only human tongue that I know that looks like that would be Gene Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> so we have now named this the Gene Simmons model of Mosasaur. Gene Simmons Mosasaur. I like it. So, George, on the screen now, I've put the an overview of all the backs of the models. Are there anything that jumps out at you? Well, now that you pointed out, they are different thicknesses. I don't like how skinny the Schleich one is. Now, I haven't seen it from this perspective. It's very <laughs> emaciated, actually. <laughs> Someone give him a fish. I do like uh, the tubbiness of the PNSO and the Popo one. Collect a large one is very streamlined, but I am noticing that the Popo and the PNSO one have that kind of little dorsal fin that none of the other ones do. So that that's a pretty neat detail from our top choices that they do have that dorsal fin, which has not been really confirmed or that we have much evidence for it. Or maybe there is. There's a lot of new discoveries happening all the time. So it would make sense that these newer, more detailed figures would include that dorsal fin. That was one of the drawbacks that I thought of the new Collect A model was simply the straightness of it. It didn't have the same v vitality as the other figures with their curves and, oh. and... It's not as dynamic. And that's what I love about the Papa one. It looks like it's hunting. Exactly. I, I really like the Papa one also. So now on the screen, I have the bellies. Anything that jumps out on the bellies? Well, these are starting to look like cr criminal uh, lineups. <laughs> Which one of these did it? Wow, some of these are darker than, than I thought. The Papo and the old Collect A are the darker models. Stuff that jumps out at me. Again, that Schleich one, poor thing, needs to eat. I have noticed that the cloacas are different shapes. Some of the cloacas are horizontal slits. Others are just circular. So that is a really neat difference once you have them all lined up next to each other. Overall, I'm not hearing any real issues with any of the bellies. No, no issues with the bellies. Let's take a look at a close-up of the faces side by side. Anything jump out at you? Oh, yes. First of all, that safari one is asking for help. <laughs> help me. Four out of the six have articulated jaws, which is which is great that they're all trending towards that. But I am noticing that the teeth on the Schleich one leave a lot to be desired. They're pretty flat in comparison to the others. And the PNSO one seems to be very, very shrink-wrapped. If you compare it to all of the other ones, it looks more like a crocodile head than a monitor lizard head, which 
are their closest relatives. So I will say that PNSO one is starting to look really shrink wrapped. And now let's take a look at the upper teeth. Oh yeah. This is my favorite part. I have noticed that the PNSO one is not painted. Oh man, for such a beautiful paint job, they didn't paint the teeth on the inside. All the other ones are painted. I would say the best one with the teeth <laughs> is surprisingly the the Collect A and the Papa ones. Collect A large or Collect A small? Oh, Collect A small. Yeah, I find that interesting because the Collect A large are not individualized teeth and that's their more deluxe model. I guess small things do get forgotten in the process, just like the PNSO ones. If you're finding these comparison pictures valuable, please let us know in the comments and we will continue this process going forward. The tongues, George. Oh, the tongues. So many tongues. The Popo has a really weird leaf looking tongue. That is kind of strange. That was one of the questions. Do we have any indication whether it would have been a long bifurcation as in some of the models or is it this short stubby it's trending towards them having a long tongue versus a kind of shorter bifurcated tongue. It's really useful for detecting and sensing prey. So I would say, Papo, you, you dropped the ball on the tongue. Right. <laughs> you mentioned the dorsal fins. Here we have a close-up of the skin textures and the coloring. Mm -hmm. So the Papo and PNSO have the dorsal fins which we've already discussed. Anything else jumping out at you? Yes, I would say the scales on the Schleich ones are very large. I kind of don't like that. Typically animals that live in the ocean don't have that much space between their scales. Uh, look at marine iguanas and sea turtles and water monitors. They have tightly packed scales to keep water out. So they're watertight. The Collect Day does a good job at kind of representing that. And so do the Papo and the PNSO ones, but the Safari and the small Collect A have just smoothed over everything, which is not very conductive to what they more than likely would have been, which were scaled marine reptiles. And then the last picture that we have is the tails. Clearly we know that the Safari LTD one is not accurate. And the Papo stands out as having a larger upper side as compared to the lower side. Mm -hmm. That is incorrect? Unfortunately, yes, that is incorrect. The top part of the back tail has to be shorter not longer. I think it may have been a mistake or maybe a, a different interpretation that they went, but four out of the six are accurate in that representation. And of those four, there's quite different shapes on those four. Do we have any idea which of the shapes would have been the most correct of those four? To answer your question, it's really hard to tell because after animals die, they kind of shrivel up a little bit. So any of these could be correct. Since we looked at all these models over two different episodes, I thought it would be helpful to create a summary chart to outline all the different features of the different models. So I'm not gonna run through all these items, but as you can see, the price goes from high to low, from the PNSO to the Safari LTD. The determination of best model is really between the PNSO and the Collect A large model. Both of those models have the vast majority of the distinctive features you would need to be considered scientifically accurate. Movable jaw, second row of teeth, although they both have problems with those teeth, bifurcated tongues, tails, the dorsal fin is not a requirement. They both have scales. The cloaca on the PNSO is difficult to find if it is in fact present, and so it really is neck and neck between these two models. Okay, so now that we've looked at the individual components, one last chance, George, is anything changing in your analysis or PNSO is still top of the chain? You drive a hard case, and my opinion has been changed, actually. When looking at all these fe features side by side, I'm going to have to go with the new Large Collect A. It's, it's hitting all the check marks, and things that I really liked about the Popo and PNSO, some of them ended up being inaccurate, and, you know... Them's the truth. <laughs> wow. I'm surprised, actually. I was not expecting that answer. <laughs> so Collect A is unseating Papo as best value then also. I would in, say so. In terms of most accurate. Now, I think the Papo one is probably the most eye-catching figure. Oh, for sure. Honestly, I'm, I'm in love with the paint scheme that the Papo figure used. But in terms of accuracy, you are now saying the large Collect A is the winner. I would say so in accuracy. The Collect A large one takes the cake. Where would the older style Collect A figure fit in to the food chain? Clearly it beats the Safari figure. Would you prefer the older Collect A model to the Schleich model or where does it fit in? I would say if you were looking for a 
good interpretation of a Mosasaur on a budget, this Collect A would be my, my budget option. However, the Schleich one is more accurate than this one. So if I was going for accuracy, I would put out double the money. All right. If you agree or disagree, please let us know in the comments. And remember, we will be doing a live stream on these figures at some point. So if you have additional questions, either submit them in advance or look below to see how you can join the live stream when it happens. Thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.